Hello and welcome to BDTV. Um, usual format today, uh, really, really quick fire, 20 minutes. Um, we're going to ask our guest uh, a, a few questions and if you have some that you'd like to submit, um, really welcome that as well. Uh, we'll also have a poll about, about midway through the session. Um, so really delighted today to be joined by Ian Grimley of Roxburgh Milkins. Um, lots of lots of lawyers say that they're a little bit different or they bring a fresh straight talking approach. But Ian really, Ian really walks the talk. Um, I've known him now for over 12 years and, and he's one of a, a select few people who I'm, who I'm delighted to say is both a client uh, and a friend. Uh, and living as we both do in Bristol, I'll often see him on his bike or in the queue for the butchers. But uh, we promised today, we've only got 20 minutes, there'll be no, no talk of sausages or Strava. Uh, it, it's all going to be about business development, what, what Ian's experience has been over the last year in his law firm and interesting bits we can share with you. So thanks very much to everyone joining and thanks very much, Ian, for coming along. Now, yeah, no problem. Good to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Ian, um, you worked in a, in, in a much larger firm before Roxburgh Milkins and, and you know, I, I must admit, I, can, I, I don't really see you as, as a corporate animal. What's the biggest difference for you now uh, be, being at Roxburgh Milkins after big law? Uh, it, it's the sort of flexibility, being able to be nimble. I mean, I think you're right. I'm, I'm not a corporate animal. And uh, I think that mainly down to my own character flaws rather than the corporate environment. Um, you, you know, Mrs. Grimley, and she'd sort of tell you that I'm not very good at being told what to do. Uh, and I'm quite impatient. So, um, you know, those sort of things don't work very well in big corporate environment. But um, I think the, bit, the biggest thing for me has been just being able to get on and do stuff. Um, and, and, you know, we are a small firm and we just, we make decisions very quickly and we crack on and do it. Um, and it, it, that, that's been the biggest difference for me. Um, yeah. Gets rid of that frustration of having to go through multiple meetings and committees and departments and what have you and just get stuff done and and do you think can, can clients see through that do you think i hope so i think i think <laughs> yeah i mean uh yeah i mean we, we we're all we're all very easy to get hold of we're all very you know very quick to turn stuff around um we all have that attitude of just of just getting on and doing it uh and i think you know yeah we, we do have a very no nonsense approach as well so, um, yeah, we we probably we're probably a bit too no nonsense sometimes. We're perhaps a bit too forthright in the way we uh, uh, come out with stuff. But yeah, again, that's that's part of not having a a big culture that you've got to fit into and a, and a certain message that you've got to get across. Yeah, yeah, I, I, and I can see I can see that obviously working working with you over the years. I can, I can see that brought to life, but. Um, you know, I, I can also empathise with with having having left a big corporate environment myself, albeit in a different mm -hmm. role. There's there's been times in the last year where I've thought, oh, that 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 comfort blanket would have been very welcome. Uh, how how has that been uh, for you? Yeah, so so I mean, I guess um, you know we're we're a, a slightly unusual model in a way because we we only do corporate and commercial, so. Um, and we're, we're, you know, very much focused on that. So we don't have anything counter cyclical. We don't, you know, we don't have a insolvency team or a litigation team that sometimes, mm. you know, are picking up when the, the deal stuff's going down. So we, we don't have that advantage. And yeah, it would be, would have been nice at some points to have had a bit of counter cyclical stuff going on. Um, but to be honest, it's, yeah, I mean, I, 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 the good thing about the way we do it, we, you know, we, yeah, you, you get some hard times and you've got nobody else to help you out with that, but we just get through it. And, um, and I think the advantage with that is it, again, I think that you was talking about how, how the clients pick up on our approach. I think they get that we're a small business as well. And we, yeah. they, you know, we have some tough times and we have some good times. So I think sometimes when you're in that big corporate, you can end up in a bit of an ivory tower because you are, 
you are you have that comfort blanket you are cosseted a bit sometimes so you don't really I don't you, you know you, it's not so easy to appreciate those harder times perhaps yeah 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 I get um, that and have you seen how you know talking candidly have you has this year or uh, certainly spring of last year were those were those the harder times for you guys sorry <laughs> interruption <laughs> yeah so I'm um, uh, it's been a year of two halves for us, really. So, um, first half of the year, particularly first quarter, was pretty, oh God, sorry, was um, was pretty tough. Um, uh, mainly because transactions just stopped for two or three months. Um, that was no surprise, really. Uh, but it's all picked up again really well, particularly in the, the last half of the year. Uh, and I think the big the big difference for us was when we were sort of into the first lockdown and those deals stopped and the work just stopped. Um, it was pretty horrible, um, but you know we sort of put some budgets in place and thought, well, if we can do something like this over the next twelve months, that'll be a, be a result. And and actually, yeah, it's come pretty good. And if you compare the last time that happened, the last time deal stopped was oh seven oh eight. And it probably took us four years to get back to where we were. Yeah. Um, and, and, and we've sort of almost got back to normal in six months. So not bad in the scheme of things, really. Yeah. yeah. And then Susie the dog agrees. Rosie the dog. Even. Rosie. <laughs> uh, uh, Rosie the puppy is barking at something invisible. <laughs> okay. So. okay. Well, I, I know um, dog theft has, has increased almost 200 and, uh, percent uh, and and the value of dogs has gone up and so, so something something's going right there you've made some choices there in terms of in terms no, I of bought at the top of the market <laughs> I, I, i'm not implying that you stole you, you stole the dog <laughs> but um in terms of coming back if we may to um to you know legal relationships and your relationships with clients and and keeping bd ticking along keeping close to existing clients, opening up other doors. We've, we've talked a lot in these sessions about how people have been absolutely swamped with uh, content, this you know, yeah. tsunami of content coming out of, out, out of law and finance firms. What has worked? What has worked for you and for your firm? You, well, you'll be pleased to know we took your advice. Yes. So the main thing we did was focus on existing clients and make sure they were okay. Um, we did produce some content, um, but uh, particularly in the first lockdown, we just we just spent a lot of time speaking to clients, yeah, um, and just having chats and just seeing how it was going and 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 just sharing stories with each other really, um, and 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 that was that was really good. I mean, yeah. you know, that, and that that was just that wasn't us. That wasn't that wasn't an attempt at. BD really it was just sort of making sure they were happy and seeing what we could do for them and but but in doing that we sort of gained a lot of insight into what was going on which was just helpful generally and then you can you can share those stories around yeah um yeah when we were a bit quieter we we, we did produce some content um we were just doing some blogs here and there I think there was yeah there was there was a ridiculous amount of sort of covid related stuff and we we did we did some of that we tried to put a slightly different angle on some of it to make it a bit different um interestingly the best result we had was just from a, a super specific blog that we published and we we've actually ended up having three new clients off that via Brilliant. linkedin um so that's probably our most successful blog ever and it was the most niche that we've ever done um but that Good. worked that, that's what that's what we're hearing that's what we're hearing even the stuff that's that looks dull and irrelevant oh it was it was it, it was pretty dull yeah but, <laughs> <laughs> but it worked well well it's it's, it's beautiful if it works yeah. and yeah that's uh, that that's what we are hearing is, is people are going super niche pinpoint relevance and mm -hmm. that's the stuff that's that's cutting through um in i'm, I'm going to ask you in, in later on if if i may about um you know the fact that you've got you've got this bristol base rather than rather than rather than London and, and, and how that fares. But um, the, the poll that we've set up today uh, relates to that very question. Uh, so I'm, I'm just gonna share it now, if, if I may, with um, people who are live with us today. And, and that is something that, that's coming up a lot with, with clients at the moment is 
this issue of is proximity going to matter as much when we return to the office? So, so what I mean by that is um, are companies who are headquartered in, in, in London going to be seeking London advice or having that? Or is there still going to be that same kudos even for, even for organisations that are outside of the capital uh, to, to seek that advice? And similarly, in, in, in Scotland, are people still going to be drawn towards, uh, towards the Edinburgh advisors? Um, and so let me just run that for a moment more, if I will. The options, if you're watching this on YouTube, just so that you have the complete picture, um, will proximity matter as much when we return to the office? Option one, yes, people will quickly revert to old ways of working and sourcing advice. Option two, uh, to some degree, especially with advice where there's a high degree of emotional or financial risk. Uh, and option three, no, actually the last 12 months have shown that, that it doesn't really matter where your advisors are based. Um, so if I may just give that uh, a moment more, I think most, most people who are, who are watching have, have voted. Um, and let me just end that on some nice round numbers just as I share that back with you. The clear winner, um, the clear winner is, is that, yeah, on, on balance, where, where, there's, where there is a high degree of, uh, of emotional or financial risk, people will, will want a uh, approximate relationship with, with their advisors. So not necessarily that they'll be capital-based, but that they'll be able to see them in the flesh. Uh, and and uh, almost a third saying, actually, no, the last 12 months have, have shown that... Um, that it doesn't really matter. What, what's your view on what's your view on that, Ian? I mean, I, I'd have got, I'd have gone for the last one um, there. Um, I, I mean, pre pre pandemic, I I would say proximity wasn't a massive issue for us. I mean, the bulk of our clients are southwest based, but we've got quite a lot of clients in London, and part of the reason we've got those is that they they see the value of of using a good quality firm outside of London that doesn't have London rates. So, and, and proximity is not an issue for them. So, um, but how, how different do you think if you, if you could go back to when you, when you, when you joined, do you think if you, if you're joining, uh, if you're set up in the city of London, as opposed to Harborside, Bristol, do you, do you think that, do you think the firm would have a different shape today? Yeah, I think so. I think we'd, I, I, I suspect we'd probably be bigger than we are now, I and mean, we'd, we'd have probably we'd have probably carried on being a bit more corporate and grown it faster and quicker and built another corporate. But I think you know, I think part part of the idea behind that firm is that we are sort of an, we have an unapologetic lifestyle element to it because um, we we we've all left corporates for a reason, and we don't really want to build another one. So we do yeah. we do. We do try and keep things different um well what, what what does that look like in practice because when you know when i when i first met you i remember it was oh it's jeans and t-shirts and uh you know very informal working environment and now now everyone's in jeans and t-shirts and informal working yeah. environment. so how do you keep that difference yeah i don't know i might have to move to fancy dress or something just <laughs> to be even more different but now I, I think like one of the biggest things for us so before again before the pandemic we were we were we were working on sort of flexibility for the staff and how they work flexibly. And we were, in, we were increasing that all the time mm. um, with the attitude that we, we don't really mind where they are as long as they're doing the work. Um, we've got, you know, one member of staff in particular has a reasonably long commute uh, and then he was spending more and more time at home. So we were, we were making that move anyway. And I think, again, I, like I said, I'd have gone for the last one on that, you know, the last 12 months for me has just proved that, I mean, if anything, we've worked more efficiently as a group. Um, it's interesting that our sort of management of, of the teams seems to be more efficient, um, even though we're not sat together. Um, yeah. we, have, we have probably more regular but shorter meetings and that, that's helped things definitely. Yeah. Um, I think we'll carry on being I mean, I, you know, we've had conversations as a, as a group of owners whereby, you know, we were thinking of looking at new premises. We won't need, we won't do that now. We'll, we'll, we'll keep this sort of, we'll keep the space we've got. And I can't see us all being in there at the same time anymore. Yeah. Um, 
and the, and the last 12 months has proved that you can do that efficiently. I mean, it will, I, I, I think it will, it will be nice. It will be nice to get back in the office a few days a week just to actually see people and have that social element. And yes, yes. Uh, and do, do you think, do you think, you know, going, um, talking about how, how well it's working remotely and so on, do, do you think, is that because you've got a real strength around tech or, or do you think that's just, that's just your view of how, how life is? I th like I say, I think we were, we were moving towards being more flexible anyway. And we were yeah. becoming more and more flexible. We were all geared up to work from home. We were all we were all starting to work from home a bit more before we were forced to. Um, and then I think being forced to do it full time has made everybody realise you can make it work. You know, some of the people who are more sceptical about it uh, now realise it's completely doable because they've been made to do it. Yeah. Um, I think I think the down you know the downside. So some of the younger people that work for us. Um, they miss coming into the office. A couple of younger people who are living on their own, you know, that they miss coming in. Yeah. I, I, I think it's it's sometimes harder to supervise the junior people um, remotely rather than when you sat next to them. Uh, but on the whole, I think it's been quite a positive experience. Yeah, that, that's something we're hearing from others. Actually, is that is that you know, the softer elements of the culture and, and, and supervision is, is, is how, to, how to translate that. So is yeah. there, uh, so you think a gradual return to the office, but not, not everyone in at the same time, not the same, and, and not the same need for space? I don't think so, no. I mean, we, we, we've, we've made the office safe, so people will be able to go in when we're ready to go in again. But yeah, I think it'll be, uh, yeah, I think people will be in, be working from home a couple of days. I think everybody will be working from home at least a couple of days a week going forward. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's been there's been lots of talk about this um, private equity dry powder and so on as we as we emerge from the pandemic and people people with an appetite and with money to spend. Is it yeah. is it too early to see that in the market? Or are you you guys starting? No, to see I mean something? we you know we've we've benefited it we've benefited from it to a certain extent. As I said, you know we've had a, a year of two halves and the last six months we've seen some really you know strong growth in transactional activity um i think on the downside there's a there's 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 a bit of there's a bit too possibly a bit too much fluffiness out there in the market at the minute i mean i was talking to talking to a client yesterday who was talking about a competitor that had been purchased at you know 27 times multiple so wow yeah, there's a bit of that going on yeah. um i yeah. think i think there's a there's a few purchasers might have buyer's regret in, in a year or so's time, but uh, no, I think it's not too early. We're definitely seeing it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and I, I'm assuming that was in some, in uh, a niche within, within technology. You were seeing it was, sort of yeah. Multiples. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay. Well, it'll, you know, it'll be interesting to see if um, certainly the, you know, the, the concern I know uh, across a lot of our, professional services community was that was that there would be something more akin to what you saw in 2010 2011 that slew exit so I'm delighted to hear that you're not seeing that on the ground I, I think I think people after the initial shock of the first few months people just started getting on with trying to do business in a new way yeah um and you know you I, for me it was really clear when we had the sort of the, the last lockdown Everybody was like, "Well, that's fine." We'll just, most of our clients were like, "Well, we we know we just carry on as normal now." Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, and then that that's the that's the big difference. I think you know it's not a normal recession; it's an enforced recession, and people have pretty quickly got on with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's driven by different things. Uh, yeah. uh, absolutely, um, Ian. That that's been really interesting. And thanks for being so open and, and honest with you us about what, what's been happening. Now, one, one final question, something we ask all the guests is, uh, what are you looking forward to most when, when lockdown is fully over? Right, so, so it's a bit of a cliche, but you and I have a mutual friend who owns a pub. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we better go on, get on to him and make sure we book a table. Yeah, yeah, I think, I, I think those, those tables will be going fast. It is a real cliche, but yes, I'm very much looking forward to that. And the, and the puppy needs, um, pub training as well so it's important to get her there okay good good well look forward to seeing you in the in in the galley sometime soon Ian uh, yeah, really pleasure you. to have you on today thanks very much for joining cheers, us Pete. cheers. No thank you take care bye-bye